My next guest on the podcast is Tom Smith, the entrepreneur. Tom has done a lot for me over the past year. If you want to get in touch with Tom today, reference the Dream Mentoring course, then I suggest you do. If you want more out of life and want to do that a little bit better, or even if you're doing really well and just want to step it up to that next level, then give Tom a shout now and he will change the game for you. I'm not going to bore you anymore, but this is Tom Smith, the entrepreneur on the What's Your Story podcast with myself, Richie Thrower. Let's get into it. My Rich, how are you, my man? Not bad, mate. How are you? Thank you very much. Hold for on a second before we start. Not bad. <laughs> I wanted to teach you in the mentor and change your words and change your world. Don't Amazing. give me not bad. Amazing. Thank you. Change it. How are you? Fucking fantastic. Get here. What have you been up to today? I get up at 3.30. I smashed the gym. Um, I got a private car to the airport. Worked. Um, flew to Manchester. I've had back-to-back meetings. Um... Probably put out about 20 fires before 12 o'clock. Really troubleshooting stuff. Nice. I kept bringing myself up a level in my frequency. Um, I did a mentoring call. I closed a new client. I bought a building in Northern Ireland with one of my business partners, Connor. Delighted with that. I'm going to turn it into a mini hotel. Get my youngest daughter involved. Probably my oldest daughter too, if she wants. Um, Amazing. Back-to-back meetings then. Matt Doogie at 5 o'clock. Um, How did Doug, that go? Dougie Joyce, fantastic. Amazing. He's re- very real. Love him to bits. He says okay. to me, you're the most serious person I'll ever meet. I went, no, I am the most serious person you'll ever meet. He went, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> um, had another meeting. And then I come down to see you. I feel privileged. I've been smashing it from 3.30. After this, I'm going to one of the major supermarket chains in the UK. I have a meeting in Oldham after this for a construction contractor meeting. Um, I'll probably hit Manchester again for 12, up again at four. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So obviously, you've done a great deal in life, and I'm sure there's still lots more to go. But, you know, from property tycoon, growing up down Shankle Road, you know, Lambos, property developing, you know, and a bit of everything else. Mm. You know, at what point, you know, where did that all start? You know, well, you've just said I've done quite a bit. For me, I haven't scratched the surface yet. I really haven't. I um, I get up every day and hustle like I'm penniless. I have to. You know, I'm on it all the time. Um, just as a kid growing up, you know, I grew up, and I've said it many times, in a house full of love. I'm very lucky that my mummy and daddy are still alive, both amazing people. Um, but we didn't, we couldn't really afford all the, the kids' catalogs, tracksuits, and, you know, the trainees and all that type of stuff, so... I got my first job at 10 years old. So I was thinking today, I've been working for 39 years. So, you know, when somebody says this guy might be an overnight success, I have been grafting my ass off for 39 years. At the age of 10, I worked in a fish and chip shop. And in the winter, I used to stand in a warm bucket of water, shivering with potato peel all over me, freezing, getting paid £10 a week. But the young entrepreneur was born then. The resilience of Northern Ireland was born then inside me. Belfast DNA is inside of me. And it just keeps pushing me through. And I'm proud of all of it. Um, and I will continue to go. My energy levels are off the Richter scale all of the time. And it's just there all the time. And yeah, you know, I'm just I'm just a, a normal guy, mate. My feet are planted firmly on the ground. And a lot of this that I do is to inspire other young people. You know, if Tom can do it, I can do it. In all the cities in the UK, I'm just a normal guy. And I'm hoping to inspire kids too. So, you know, and God's a huge part of my life that we'll probably touch on as you go through this podcast. But... Just to get back to the start of it too also, thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's a privilege to have you on. You were a mentor and clan of mine and you've turned into a very close friend. And yeah. we'll touch on all that as we go through the podcast. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So when you grew up in Belfast, yeah. you know, what sort of pushed you to do what you want, what you're doing now and what sort of put you on that path to I want more out of life? Was it, you know, the upbringing where you sort of were thinking, you know, I really want to get out of this I didn't want to get out of anything, you see. I'm so proud of my city. I'm so proud of my country. Growing up in the war was part of my life. Our abnormal life was my normal life. Um, So I didn't know any better. I didn't want to get out of anything. I was part of it all. You know, we we just grew up in this war and it was like normal. Just normality. Did you hear about John? What happened? John got killed. Fuck, that's terrible. Would you want a vodka or a beer? Yeah, yeah. That's that's The price of life was was shocking. Yeah, Um, yeah. You look back on what we took as... A normal situation was that pretty not a normal situation. And 3,600 lives were lost in Northern Ireland. But, you know, 
just to touch on something that I want to say, I'm so proud of both communities and how far they've come on and how far they keep going. And I'm so proud of the community leaders in our country that brokered that Good Friday Agreement. That's what America is. That's what real dreams are. That's what turning a dream and putting hard work in it and making it a goal and turning it into reality. It saved the country. Yeah, yeah. Um, and for me as a kid, I just wanted more. You know, my mommy used to say to me, what did we get you son, the movies? Because I always was different. I remember walking into the pub and the lads were all drinking beers and vodkas. I didn't drink. And I was sitting with property brochures and the lads were laughing at me. You're going to buy a house. I'm like, of course I'm going to buy a house. And every one of them laughed. And I sat for about six months studying property at the age of 18. So I was borderline on at the age of 18, turning 19. And um, I bought my first house. 30 grand or 32 grand, something like that. And everybody was like, Jack, that guy I already bought a house, but I really wanted it. You know, bricks and mortar. I was reading up and stuff as a kid. You know, property is the way to go. And then an exceptional thing happened, and both of our communities found peace. So that every the guy that everybody was laughing at in the pub, they weren't laughing when when property prices exploded, and the quadrupled. Yeah. The house I bought for thirty odd grand was worth a hundred odd grand. Yeah. The lads on the pub were all scarpering, trying to buy houses. I was already on the ladder. You know, people say. You're a lucky guy. When hard work meets opportunity, you know, and what does Gary Player say, the famous golfer? The harder I work, the luckier I get. Yeah, yeah. I've been working hard from I was 10. Yeah. You make your own luck, don't you? Of course. You do. Luck. So, what? <laughs> so did you buy that house during all the troubles and all that? I bought that when the war was going on. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. then the next thing we found peace. Yeah. And my house just went boom. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was the first thing to start, start me on the property ladder, you know, um... I was making off me as a kid. Yeah, you know? yeah. Then I bought a big detached house, moved in beside all these middle aged people. They're all like, some guy says to me, Do you watch the rugby? Nah, mate, don't watch rugby. <laughs> you know, never spoke to me <laughs> yeah, ever again. Yeah. I was okay, but <laughs> I had a big four bedroom detached house at the age of 20. Um, it was like the housewives of Belfast. <laughs> <laughs> and I lived in this gorgeous big house, but I was always just pushing, hustling, grafting, working on building sites. I had two, night, two nightclub door jobs. You know, loved it, you know, but putting the work in is where it's at. You know, I was working more than I was dreaming. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. where it's at, you know. And I didn't even realize how dedicated I was to the cause of, su of success. Um, but it's it's continued to give me a great life. It's now getting me to the point where people are spotting. That guy's on it. Yeah, yeah. And do you uh, think, like you say, do you think if you didn't grow up where you grew up, do you think you'd still have that like hustle mentality still if you didn't grow up where you did do you know what i mean yeah i've never really thought about it like that i um i'm so i'm so proud of where i've grew up so yeah, proud yeah, yeah of both communities no no like not in like a bad way but as you know maybe some of like the experiences that you went through i don't is think that it's maybe of... where i grew up it's maybe how i grew yeah, up yeah yeah you know yeah. um having a, a mommy and daddy who were amazing gave us an incredible life little holidays that didn't cost any dough but I wanted more. Um, and yeah. I knew money gave me a choice. And at the age of 10, sometimes I would have bought my own trainees or my own tracksuit. And other times I would have just looked at my own money box. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I knew I had a choice when it came to a financial bit of st stability in my own life. Yeah, of course. Uh, and the further I worked and the more I learned, by the time I was 18, I started going, hold on, this is, this is gonna work here. This. The more yeah, I yeah. keep going here, I'm gonna start having choices in life, be yeah. able to make my own decisions. Oh. Um, and that's what hard work does. Hard work pays off. Yeah, hard of work works. Of course it does. So when, obviously, when you bought that very first house, did you think you'd be where you're at today now? Or did it ever sort of cross your well, mind I, that? I was doing calculations on if I have multiple, property, multiple properties, what will end up coming in a month. So I was doing all these scenarios as a young guy. Um, I, I, I didn't really ever look where it was going to be at a certain age. You, just you know. enjoyed doing it as you were doing it yeah because i was a, i was a kid um and self-development and stuff that we'll probably speak about and goals and things it's not something that i was ever taught or it's not something that we were allowed to speak about like we were just coming out of a war so yeah, yeah. are you happy uh, no because uh, you weren't allowed to be happy yeah, yeah you weren't yeah. allowed to be successful you weren't allowed to be wealthy in the in the faces of our communities because you would have been c called in and asked where did you get that money well yeah, i've been yeah, working yeah. my ass off can you prove it Oh, uh, yeah, I can. There you go. Okay, that's all right. You know, we uh, we were all controlled to a certain extent because 
the communities were controlled. Um, and back then, that's the way it was. Uh, and I, I'm not knocking it either. It's just it was a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but so your aspirations and stuff were probably contained. Is the answer to that? Um, did I see myself going to where I'm at? Where am I at? Because I don't even think I've scratched the surface. You know, I I just I am up and at Keep it going. every day, and it's you know I don't mean the curse. Let's fucking go. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah, what's yeah. going on in my head when I wake up? Yeah, amazing. It's like the right now. Let's go, man. And it's twenty five to nine, and I've been up from three thirty, and I'm ready to go right now. Get it? Ready to go to bed? No, or to another beat. <laughs> I'm just ready to go. <laughs> So, obviously, I know more than most, dream mentoring. For people that are listening, probably some people may not know, so tell us, what is dream mentoring? Yeah, this is probably one of the first times I've ever been able to speak about it on a podcast, so thanks. How come? Because people ask you different questions. Yeah, yeah, And it's yeah, sometimes yeah. touched on, but, you know, this is a bit of a special one for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. I am delighted they have met you. Um, I got a phone call one day in Manchester. Some kid on the phone, busting the open, a videography, uh, social media marketing business, had big aspirations and belief. And that was you. And um, you drove from Wales, told me you'd meet me in Liverpool, uh, and you did. And um, like, I have watched you, like, I just got, they're not goosebumps, they're truth bumps. <laughs> That's what they really are. Because when you get a goosebump, it's actually you're the truth coming yeah. through. It's a truth bump. And I met you, and we just clicked, and I just thought, this guy's going to go far. You worked for an amazing security company. I know Michael's an amazing guy. You know, you had a brilliant uh, time with those guys. Yeah. But you have just skyrocketed, and the mentoring program is made for people like you who are starting off or, or going around in circles or people that are at super high levels but want to go up a level. Yeah, and um, my mentoring business, I, I started Dream Mentoring, DMP, Dream Mentoring Program. I started it through COVID, and it's just... It's going and getting bigger and bigger and it's getting wider. It's going all of Ireland, all of the UK. We're going to break into Poland, Australia, America. It's going, it's going to be, a, well, it's not going to be. It is a global business. It's yeah, already yeah. doing that. You know, I was over training dentists and all in Miami and Florida, um, or St. Grand Cardone. But for me, it's been able to give somebody advice. And the nice thing, I believe, at 49 years old, when I'm giving you advice, and I'm telling you not to do something because I've made that mistake. You know, I haven't read some magazine or went and done some course in London. It's I'm teaching you and mentoring people from the heart because I care. I care about my clients. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, unlike some people, but that's okay. Everybody runs their businesses differently. If somebody's going through a tough day and they need to speak to their mentor, I will make myself available for that call because those, those customers, those guys and girls are my kings and queens. Without those, I don't have no business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I see another person shine, when I see another person become successful, when I see another person's mindset change and them get strong inside, it's the most heartwarming feeling in the world, helping another person win. Yeah, of course. And what sort of like made you start the mentoring program? Obviously, as you said, then it's absolutely brilliant. I can I can vouch for that. What made you, you know, or who made did somebody say something to you? Yeah, you but people, people used to always say to me, your advice is golden, you know, and... COVID kicked in and we started seeing the worst trading pattern from the Second World War. So I had decided personally, I'm going to go to war with COVID. I am going to win. So I wrote a book, Fearless, an antidote to self-doubt, global success. I did not want to waste one second of my time. I then decided, you know something? It is what it is. It's time. And I started writing a mentoring program. I had an amazing girl working with me called Jackie. She helped me structure and write, and write the program. And we launched it and bang, it just took off. And it's just getting bigger and better. And since then, I've, I've coached UFC stars, uh, movie directors, actors, housewives, sports stars, and amazing business people from all levels. Like our amazing Peter and Anthony, both friends of ours. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. clients, but they're friends of mine now. You know, yeah. the top clients who own specialist car homes for children, Richard Parkers and David Haswells and, you know, Chris Wilsons, who are building half of London. You know, the recycling people, people owning bathroom build business, aesthetics girls, car showroom people, the state agents. The list goes my, on. Well, yeah, because my program's designed to help everyone. It's not a specific program for an industry. Yeah. And it works. And so I'm going to interview now, you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to interview now. <laughs> Go on. What did it do for you, Rich? Talk <clears> us through <throat> the mentoring program. So you met me. What, what's your journey been like? Talk us through it. The past year has been nuts. Like... And I never thought I couldn't do it. And the the way, you know, when when people said, 
you know, well, you were already... When people describe it, they said, oh, well, you know, you were already like a fast car already. Do you know what I mean? You've almost just given me that boost of NOS to just go bang and go over. You know, you know what I mean? Obviously, I was in I was in a job for years that towards the end of, you know, the last couple of years, I was like, I really don't like this. And I... And, one of the things that you were in your job was dedicated and disciplined. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. as an entrepreneur, you've applied that, and that's why you're winning. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You're all. You always turn up. You're always on time. You're always professional. You know, your edits and your videos are always on time. You're applying some of the stuff that made you shine in that job. But what was the main thing the mentoring program gave you as well? Like I know it gave you huge self belief because you've told me that many <clears> times. But what did it really do for you? It, is this my podcast or is it ours? Yeah, <laughs> the tongue cast. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, it it just I don't. It's it's really hard to say because you can't really put it. It did so many things. I can't say, oh well, it just did this for me and made me do this. You know, it it almost you know unlocked. You know, so you said you said quit your job. You know, you've just gone through a list of people that you work with this week. And now you you you're still asking me why haven't you, you know you're you're saying to me well, why haven't you quit your job? I suppose for me as a mentor, it's a big thing to ask somebody to step away from their job, and it's not yeah, something yeah. I normally do instantly like that. You know, but obviously we'd spoke for a while. Yeah, yeah. But when you when you see the ridiculous potential in someone which you had dripping from you, you know the genius. I've seen your video work. It was like it was like having Messi playing for a church league team and you needed to put him where he belonged. And that's yeah, yeah. like, you are skyrocketing. And I know my black book, my phone is worth a lot of money, opening up all numbers yeah, to you and connecting you. And I, you know, but the only reason I'm connecting you to all my clients too, for you to shine, is because you're brilliant at your job. I would, I, mean. I would not be giving your number out to people if you were rubbish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not good at your job. You're first class at it. Nice one, mate. Appreciate that. But yeah, it's, it's hard to say. And you know, like you say, connections, you know, the constant rich do this, rich do all. You know, not even so much of that, but just being on someone and, and I was... Did it help your accountability? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I've always sort of thought I was a bit of a ninja, do you know what I mean? And I've, I've always gone around and said, oh, nobody will ever work harder than me. And I still believe that to this day. But, you know, it's more... That that quitting that whole you know that's that's the biggest thing you ever did for me was making getting me mindset right to quit my job because for me you know I'd left school I joined the army I was there for years I came out I did security I've all I was always employed by someone so I've, I think I the other bit if you remember I'm gonna put you back if you and, and there's something you'll start yeah, remembering yeah, yeah. us too um, like it was the money worry yeah what that was the gonna, biggest thing yeah. what am I gonna do yeah yeah. Uh, but where's the money going to come from? Yeah. And then the next thing, because you were on the right frequency, because you yeah. were doing a professional job, you started believing in yourself. The law of attraction started really opening up and giving you bits and pieces. Yeah. Then your confidence started really opening up. And then that magic word begins with M, that magic momentum started, and now you can't stop. Yeah, yeah. It's it was just... literally the week I'd quit, I think, on a, on a Friday and said I'd work a month, but <coughs> they didn't want to anyway, but... That following week, it just went whack, 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 whack. Mm. Job, job, job. And there was my salary for that month straight away. And I was like, the fuck? <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Works. But you do, you sit yeah. there and you think, holy shit, this is, it's it's not weird. You got, it's not you, a coincidence, but it, it just you, went. You got to trust the process. Yeah, yeah, of course you have. And people would say, this universe stuff. And you're like, yeah, yeah. It works. Yeah. I try and tell people to watch The Secret now and they fucking laugh the tits off. And I just think, Mate, it works. It's not mumbo jumbo, yeah. but it work. It apply it, do everything that it says, and it fucking works. It, it does. Really does. Yeah. It does. If yeah. you wake up and say you're gonna have a shit day, you're probably gonna have a shit day. No, you're gonna have one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really do you know what I mean? Yeah. I've heard people say, and I've mentioned it before. How you doing, Tom? I'm flying, loving life. Is that your Lambo sir? Yes, it is. How are you doing? Struggling on, Tom. And they don't realise using that catchphrase or their chat line. And they use it as they continue to meet people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it going? Great. What about you? Struggling on. They're attracting nothing but struggle. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I would always push with my clients, change your words or change your thoughts and change your world. You can think yourself into your own magnificent life, sorry, magnificent life, or you can think yourself into your own disaster. Yeah. What one do you choose? You're almost just digging a hole further. 
oh, it's so like you can go down a rabbit hole like that. Yeah, yeah. Or you and can, I've done it myself. You know, we I think have. everyone's done it. Yeah. You know, but once you start sitting there and thinking, well, actually, no, I'm not going to let this affect me. Mm. You'll be surprised by just saying that. And continuing on. See, all of us are like radios, like old, fas- old fashioned, old fashioned, mm. I can nearly speak. <laughs> all of us are like radios, old fashioned transistors where we can tune the frequency up and down. So you can be in Doom and Gloom FM or you can be in Radio 1 FM New York, like let's go FM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just, all it is is a, a sequence of tuning yourself up to the right frequency. Yeah. And, and you're like having one of those, man, I'm having a Baraka day. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you see the television art, that's just somebody on the right frequency. But, all of us can be on that right frequency. I was having a bit of a nightmare morning. Bang, just changed my frequency. Yeah, yeah. And I've been winning since then. You know, it's all yeah. of it is is a flick of a switch. But in the mentoring program, I teach people how to tune on and off frequencies, how to change their mindset, how to correct their self-talk, how to believe in themselves, how to love themselves. Yeah, yeah. I love myself enough now never to have a drink. That's yeah, yeah. self-love. Yeah. Self-love's absolutely. not the guy who's looking in the mirror going, yo. Self-love is loving yourself, yeah. not to do crazy things. Yeah. You know, that's what self-love's about. Yeah, definitely. Self-love's also about not giving people permission to treat you badly. Yeah. You know, it's all relevant. Yeah, one hundred. I live this. Yeah. All of the time. You've got to. You've got to. And like I've told you before, the biggest battle you will ever fight is you against you. Yeah. And I knock out the old version of me every day. Yeah, 100%. You've done very well, mate. <laughs> I ain't got started yet, <laughs> motherfucker. So obviously, as well as the mentoring course that you do, you also do sales um, sales training and motivational workshops for businesses. Do you want to mention that for anyone? Yeah, well, thank you for asking. You, know, I do sales training for some of the biggest companies in the UK, the world, actually. I've done sales training recently for Securitas, the biggest security company in the world. Um, I boosted their London's, the London's office of sales by a million pound a month. Anybody interested, I have the reference. I can send it to you. It's all real. But we're going through different changes in life where people are up and down, the economy scaring people. And so we're doing motivational workshops where I will walk into a workplace. I'll find out people's gripes. Some people are hating you from you walk in, but you're leaving and they're your best friend. They can see that you're there to self-develop them, to help them. We're bringing on food offices on the mentoring course. We're doing the workshops first and foremost. Um, we're working for estate agents and stuff, the sales training. It's to show people, you know, pick up a phone call. The more hands you shake, the more calls you make, the more money you make. Sales isn't sending an email or popping somebody a text. And it's also going back to old school, old core values and showing people pick up a phone, go and shake hands, go and rob somebody's door, say hello, yeah, yeah. introduce yourself, get personable, COVID's over. Yeah. Anybody wants to say COVID's having a comeback, so what? Is it fucked? Covid's not so real what? anyway. You know, no comment. <laughs> but you know, get yourself out there and and the sales training, the motivational stuff. It's about making people believe in themselves again. Yeah. You know, you can do it. You are good enough. You are worthy. Let's yeah. go. But also, you can do more. There's a lot of you know. Absolutely. There's you so know. many places now where, well, everywhere I've worked, religiously falling out with people because. People don't do enough, and when you call well, them out, I, on I it, know, I know how hard a worker you are. Like you're a grafter, and I respect the life out of you for your for your work rate. You don't work harder awesome. than me or better than me, but um, nah. but you're you're right, you're right there, and, yeah. uh, and you're probably one of the most hardest working people I've ever met. But it must have been frustrating when you were in certain, and I, the, I know the frustrating bit for you sometimes is watching other people not give the same commitment. And be expected to pay a salary because you were so fond of the owner. Yeah, yeah, and it's and I'm saying that in the most professional way because I, yeah, I really yeah, like yeah. the guy. Yeah, 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 and it wasn't you know, and it wasn't just the last company where it was it was every in life, company, even it's in the army, everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah of course, yeah, yeah. it's just in you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, it just it it's more when you care about something, you know, even though it's not your business, it's not your thing. You're not you know building. It's, like, it's about it's, commitment. Like see tonight, like I could have went. I'm tired. So what? You're my friend. You became my friend. You're, act, you're a mentoring client previously. God knows you'll probably come back onto the course. You're somebody that I recommend. If I couldn't come here tonight, and what level of commitment do I have in life? I always do one thing in life as I do everything in life. Yeah, I'm yeah. always committed. And you're the same. Yeah. And when you're so committed like that and you see other people not, sometimes it annoys you. Yeah. Um, and it's okay too. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's people okay are happy to do, to do that. You know, and I've got no problem with that. But 
it's really like you say, you know, it's really frustrating for someone like me and you to be around 10 people around you that, you know, you're going. But I also have to remember, and so do you, everybody's different. You yeah, know, we're, we're on this upward projector. Some people want to coast. Yeah. It's not my thing. Yeah. It's never going to be. And average is, average has been it. removed from my vocabulary. Yeah. But that's their forte, and I have to respect it too. So recently, yeah, I heard that you're in a film. A little birdie says. The little birdie was right. <laughs> so what happened in 2021 um, in my previous house, I had a, a brilliant guy who was in doing some video work for me. And I was sitting writing my mantra at four or five in the morning. Sorry, did you say someone was doing some video work for you? It was before I knew you. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, just, yeah. And I was sitting writing my mantra. So my mantra is an A4 page in the morning. And I read about this amazing person, but that amazing person is me. Now, that's not me being overconfident. I write this page about this incredible person, so I become that person. My mantra gives me the confidence some mornings when I wake up with anxiety. It really helps me remember who I am. And I started off, I am a warrior of Jesus Christ. My second sentence is, I am a sober man. I am a sober man. I am a huge money and vast wealth magnet. I am a total health and fitness magnet. I am the most amazing loving dad to my, gir my girls. I'm the most amazing loving husband to my wife. I'm a man that makes things happen. Everything I touch turns to gold. Bang. And the next sentence was, I'm in magazines and movie scenes. I'm here to do it all. And I went, what? I like a sentence. So I started writing it. I'm in magazines. I'm in movie scenes. I'm here to do it all. And I took the sentence out of my mantra. Well, I kept it in it, but I took it out and put it into a goal. And I started writing a goal that I wanted to act in a movie. I wanted to show people, let me show them a way that Dream Mentor really works. Let's get this caught in video. Show them the system works, and I'm just going to prove a point. And it did. So I went and met a friend of mine called Keith Bishop, an incredible man who's Johnny Depp's PR manager. And I phoned him probably 40 times in a week. <laughs> but that's what I do. I'm relentless. <laughs> yeah. I'm relentless on the, on the journey of success. Yeah. Keith called me and says, fucking hell, Tom. Like, when is this going to stop? And I said, I just need to meet with Terry Stone. Terry Stone, the amazing film director and actor. Terry's made 33 films. Keith called me, says, I've done it for you. Go meet Terry. You're meeting the Annabelles in London. I met Mr. Stone. We get on like a house on fire. And at the end of it, Terry says, look, I'd be interested in coming onto your mentoring program. I said, thank you so much. And he says, would you be interested in maybe having a part money in our movies? I'm like, get in, lad. So I've mentored and coached the amazing, famous Terry Stone. Tony Tucker he's himself. He's an amazing guy. Yeah, yeah, he's just such he's a... unbelievable. He's a personal friend of mine yeah. now. Tony Tucker himself. Um... But then I've made the goal a reality, 2021. And now in 2023, I've been in Two Days of Blood, Rise of Foot Soldier, small acting part. I've already been picked for another few films. And the whole point is the story's not about Tom Smith. The story's not about being in a movie. It's simply to show you dream, mentor, and my system works. All my clients are taught this system. Doesn't matter if it's a movie or writing a book or opening a 10 million pound company. If you write a goal relentlessly and take the action to achieve it, you will make that goal a reality. And that's why I done it. I also had a good laugh doing it too. Want to come home with me tonight, love? <laughs> Want to come home with me tonight, love? <laughs> yes, for anybody that's listening, thanks to Richard. Uh, my part is with a stripper. Um, <laughs> so thanks for that. Yeah, you you just floored me there. Want to come home with me tonight, love? Um, I've never been in a strip joint yet. So uh, yeah, but listen, it's a start. It's the first yeah, time in a movie. Um, very lucky to be picked for another couple new, all the news coming on them soon um, and like I say it's not about me or the movie and this is reaching out to the kids from the street to let them know whether you're in Belfast Manchester if I can do this you can do this yeah, you know definitely. there's a choice in life don't you know pick the, pick the pick the best route in life instead of the easy route yeah, you yeah. know hard work works and a route that you like not doing something just for money as well I think yeah, one, one bad decision in life can take you down a whole different rabbit hole and there's no recovery from it, you know. Yeah. So I, I would hate to see the younger generations coming up making a load of mistakes. And sometimes I just put stuff out there to try and inspire people. Yeah, you yeah. know, look what Tom, Tom's worked his ass off. And it works. It yeah. works. Yeah. Do you want to hear something exciting? I would love to. I'm making a film. Yeah. What is it? Can't tell you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's... But... Next year, there will be a film out. Okay. I was going to ask you to do it as well, if you want to. Be of course, yeah. <laughs> but it'd be good. But that's all I'm going to Anything say. along the lines to help me in here? Mm, 
You know what I've wrote a movie? Yeah, I've seen it. You've read it? Yeah. It's really well, good. It, yeah, It's really good. Yeah. So Terry's into it. That's true. what I've copied and I'm going to make that. <laughs> self. I, you, know, you know Terry's interested in making that movie as well? Yeah. So I've wrote a movie, guys. Um, and it's probably going to be coming out over the next couple of years too. They were at Terry Stone, the film director, loves it. Um, it just shows you what Terry you can is. do. But, Isn't it mad? Yeah, but you know, and here's the thing. I 100% completely believe in myself. Yeah. That's not being cocky or overconfident because what people don't realize is there's days I wake up and I have zero confidence. Yeah. And it's like going to the gym. It takes daily work, you know. Yeah. Um, but once you can flick a switch, you can do anything you put your mind to. Yeah. Like there's nothing you can't yeah. do. No, there's not. Nothing. And it's like as soon as I left, everyone laughs the red off now, but as soon as I left that job, I was like, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do everything that. I used to worry about people wanting to. But you know what really, you know know what really impresses me? The support you get from your missus. I think she deserves a big shout out. I wouldn't be able to do anything without her. Let's give her a shout out. Shout out to Kirsty. (laughs) Kirsty, honestly, love your brain. Giving him, it's great to see the support he gets. I'm very proud to call him a friend, and it's great to watch him on the way up. And we might be striking a partnership up here at the end of this too, because he's my guy. Kirsty also met you last week. She did. The premier. Yeah, great girl. Yeah. She, um, yeah, I wouldn't. She's at uni as well. I don't know if you know, she's at uni at the moment as well and know. still flies around looking after the kids. And I'm always a nightmare saying, Can you just do this for a couple of hours while I go and do it? And you know, she one, never of, one says of the no. things that I noticed with you and Kirsty looking at me was, um, like we were in, so we've been at the, the film, Rise of Foot Soldier. We went to the after party. Um, I had two tables, 20 clients. And I was very lucky to be able to bring you guys. And you must have thanked me 10 times because yeah. that's what real people yeah, do. Yeah, so yeah. thank you. But huge bottles of vodka, like they were magnums. Yeah. Um, drinks, magnums, mixers everywhere. Yeah. And I could see you looking at me and, and your missus going, how does he do this? <laughs> I don't drink. And, you know, I'll just put it out there. I'm allergic to alcohol because it doesn't work for me. Yeah. And I, am, I pride myself on my sober addict. It's been a challenging journey. Um, and when did you stop that? When did you, when, at what point did you, what year did you go? I've been on this, this journey for nine years and I've failed a million times. And yeah. now I've got it. And uh, it's the most amazing, rewarding thing in the world. You know, um, AA for me is just a game changing. You know, it's not a stigma or it's, it's full of amazing people. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The huge part of my life was God. You know, I might still curse. I will move away from cursing, believe it or not. I don't have Tourette's. I will move away from cursing, but I, the God, you know, God saved my life, mate. And um, I hand it over to God. I get on my knees, I speak to God, hand it over. And sometimes you feel a bit uncomfortable. And, you know, the famous saying is, this too will pass. And it always does. And my super Addy is my super part. I am proud of it. I wouldn't have a drink for 200 million quid. Um, I'm hopefully inspiring other people. To yeah, stop, yeah. to stop drinking. You know, the new drinking's not drinking. You know, it's it's, yeah. it's a real cool thing to do. And after movie premieres and things like that, I'm having room service and I'm waking up at four thirty again, and I'm that's me starting back to work. And yeah. I just I love it, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, but I also love being out in company, pouring people's drinks. How you all doing? Yeah, and everybody still have a good night. Yeah, but if I pass twelve, need that to have a good night, I turn into a bit of a meal Cinderella and I disappear. Yeah, because I don't need to be there. And I'm just grateful for all my clients, my mentoring clients, friends who were at it, like yourself, invited and all those people saying thank you for being my clients. And then I'm gone. I have nothing to prove anymore. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel about anything to prove. No, you haven't. You haven't. And if somebody wants to call me out, why don't you drink? I don't need to explain who myself. Who cares? Well, what? It, how is it affecting them? By you not drinking? Because some people feel uncomfortable over it. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay. Maybe they feel threatened because they want to drink. So if anybody's ever gone down that route, send me a DM and let me help you. You know, and, you know, I also think about sometimes amazing women and stuff out, you know, weighing a clock and people drinking quite a bit and stuff, you know. It's like a fashion statement, isn't it? Yeah, right? but it's it's not good, man. No, no. You know, it, drink will get a hold of you and it'll come back and take a shot off your back and then it'll come back for you. Yeah. I probably drink once, twice, max. I've yeah, never no. seen you drink. Um, I didn't even yeah. see you drink at the premiere. I was drinking at the premiere. <laughs> Just didn't see. I was, I was like, that. no. You drink my but, fucking vodka, son. <laughs> but I, I mean, I used to go out all the time. I was DJing all over the world for donkeys, and I think mm. I must have just got bored of it very, very early because yeah. I was doing it all the time. And then, yeah. I mean, it never took over us, but it was 
Maybe it did, and I just didn't well, know. I was but... like, I was involved in the music scene. I worked in a, in a nightclub called the Network Club. Yeah, very proud. Loved that job. And my last two hours of my gig, I ran the door. Uh, but my last two hours was always looking after superstar DJs, and you seen some DJs had a real issue, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so look at Avicii. Yeah, it's it's sad, yeah, but it, again, it's just addiction grabbing a hold of somebody. It's not yeah, to do with yeah. DJs. It's where addiction yeah, takes people. Yeah, yeah, of course yeah. it is. And it, it, I've seen it's, ki- it's it's killing me watching what drugs is doing to society now. Yeah, young people thinking it's okay to take cocaine and all that type of stuff. It's not okay all the time. Be brave. Do you want one of these? No, I don't. It's not normal to take drugs. No, it's not normal. You know, and I, I I'm I'm very happy to speak out about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, suicide rates and all. It's all because of drugs. Honestly, I've so it's it's very upsetting, and our police forces, our police forces aren't getting enough big big enough budget to be able to fight it. Yeah, you know the police, of course, are doing an amazing job, but their hands are tied when they don't get enough money to be able to fight the drug game. You yeah, know, it's, yeah, it's crazy. There's ten people taking drugs to one person Sad. in the police, and it, it's killing communities. Yeah, you know, and I don't care who I'm upset and saying this. You know, yeah, it's yeah, not. Yeah. It's all, it's disgusting. Yeah, I've lost so many friends to you know even through the rave scene and stuff like that because that's what it was. You know. We were all going out every weekend. I got out of it, and you know, years down the line now, it's there's three, four people every year that mm. I used to go with who never got out of it and still do it. And you know, yeah. suicide, heart attacks, you know, dying at yeah. an after party. It's now it's like bloody hell. It's him. You know, there's another one. There's another one. There's another like, one. Like I'm 49, and people my age are all dying of heart attacks, but that they're they're cocaine users that are dying. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It's sad. You know, it's dangerous. So anybody that's maybe listening to this, if you are using, please try and come off it. You know, I'm not judging anybody. I'm just saying try and come off it for yourself. Yeah. Try and come yeah. off it for your family. Yeah. Definitely. And there's help out there. And I see if you want to have a conversation with me, send me a DM. You know, yeah. that's what it's all about. You have to help each other. If you're liking this podcast, then please hit subscribe, hit like, and share it with your mates. The more subscribers we have, the better the guests will be. So please hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button and share it with all your mates. 8% of people on this channel aren't subscribed. I really want to get that percentage up. So please, let's show a little bit of support and let's get some good guests on. This is Dougie Joyce, Uncensored, with Richie Thrower. So, coming up for Tom. Mm. Grant Cardone. Event in Poland. Yeah, you know, the Grant Cardone thing for me, um, I spoke about it very openly for years in Belfast. I need to have a wee drink of this energy. Yeah, (laughs) I used to say to everybody, you know, I'm going to meet Grant Cardone. I'm going to partner up with Grant Cardone. And everybody's like, yeah, 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 he's nuts. Kid from Belfast. Known about an American billionaire. But I just totally ha- had it in my head. I wasn't going to win. I'd already won. Yeah. I'd already seen myself with Grant. That's not being obnoxious. It's not being too confident. I just believed in it. I wrote the goal for three years. Every day. Six days a week, because I don't do it on a Sunday. Yeah. Six days a week for three years. Taking the action, reaching out on LinkedIn, sending videos of my wins through COVID. Sent a donut delivery. Anybody wants to have a laugh, at, please send me a DM and I'll explain to you how donut deliveries work. No, go on, explain. Yeah. Go on, because that is quite a good story. <laughs> so the, the donut delivery, sometimes you need to get somebody's attention, right? Yeah. And in COVID, I went, okay, I'm that close to really... I was connecting with all of Grant's team. Like his, his amazing president is Jared Glant, who is my friend. I'm lucky to call him a friend. Natalie in his office is my friend. Elliot is my friend. But I started reaching out to all these people on LinkedIn, Instagram, and I thought, how do you really get somebody's attention? So they all knew I was from Belfast, the Irish accent. I went, I want to say thank you for their recent connections. Bang. Found the nicest donut shop closest to their office. Spent $800 in donuts. <laughs> sent it to their office and I got all the videos back. Hey, Tom, <laughs> thank you so much. He says he's going to hijack a jet and come and see us. And the next thing, everybody in the office started saying, who is this guy from Belfast? That's Tom, the 10X guy who sends us the videos. And sometimes you really need to do something completely out there and different to get somebody's attention. Yeah, yeah. The next thing I got a video from Grant, I was like, wow. I just couldn't believe it because... The guy for me, the whole 10 acts thing, it's okay to do 10 times more, 100 times more, his family values and core values and his beliefs were just exactly the same as mine. And uh, just a few weeks ago, I was lucky to sit beside Grant. Mr. Cardone, I would call him. 
in Miami. Because I have so much respect for him. I met him in Miami. Um, the man was just incredible. Yeah. He is a billionaire, but he's also one of the guys. Uh, um, I'm so proud to sit and talk to him. He, he was so inspirational. Such a nice yeah, guy. He's a gentleman. Guy. You know, as w I walked into his office and everybody knows me now, and it was great. I got a standing ovation. Everybody's all clapping <laughs> up, and I'm like, 10x, let's go. But the whole office is, let's fucking go. That but been... that's the vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but just sitting with Mr. Cardone, he was telling me about Meg Tyson. He was telling me about his property journey. We were talking about what was it like growing up in Northern Ireland. And he was like, really? And, you know, then... One of the reasons I was there was with Damien and Daniel, my two business partners from Poland. And we are doing Show Me the Money in Warsaw, the first and second of December. And one of my goals was to do a day, to do a gig with Mr. Cardone, a kid from Belfast. And we were doing an event. And on the second of December, we we're having Mr. Cardone, Grant Cardone himself, speaking at our event, broadcast live from Miami. He's then doing a Q&A and then I'm being introduced on the stage. That's insane, isn't it? So, you know, the dreams come true. Going back to buying that very first house as a kid. Did you ever, I mean, I don't know whether Grant Carter, whenever anyone knew about him then, but how mental is it now looking back to, I bought that first house, I'm now sitting next to Grant Cardone, probably the biggest property guy in the does world. Does a dream turn into a goal, turn into a real, reality? Absolutely it does. And yeah. I've, I just want to also prove to anybody my mentoring system works. Yeah. You know, the three-year period, why did, it not, why did it not happen quicker? COVID was in the mix or I would have nailed that even quicker. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. sat with an American billionaire. I have the utmost respect for him and his team. Now we're doing a public speaking event together. God knows where it'll go. I've wrote some goals, so I know where it's going. God will bless me with them too. But anything is possible, you know. Yeah, you know, and I've, I've seen that in my head. I've wrote the goal, I've took the action, and bang, there you go, Dream Mentoring works. So show me the money, Warsaw, 2nd of December. Let's go, man. Let's, Let's fucking go. It. I heard the video team that you're taking over there is the best in the world as well. No, they're, they're probably the best in the universe. <laughs> oh, fuck, it's you. Yeah. Yeah, how you doing? Yeah. Well, of course but it's yeah, you, I told that'd you. That'd be amazing. That'd be brilliant. Uh, just It'd to, be really good to just, meet him as just well. Just to tell you so you don't know this, you're going to have to come with me because I'm flying in on a private jet and I'm getting a black Eurus Lamborghini Jeep to pick me up at the runway. So you're going to be all part of that. That's or cool. I might pick a G-Wagon. So, That's But cool. I want, I'm just going to blow the whole thing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to shoot brand new content, landing in the jet, going to do an event with Grant. has to be perfect. So you're the guy shooting it, son. Get in. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> no, that'll be good. It'll be, yeah, that'll be brilliant. It'd be nice to meet him as well. It's, and you know when you obviously you've met him before, but, but that, that was that was so personable. Yeah, yeah. You know he yeah. gave us nearly an hour of his time. Yeah. It blew my mind. Yeah. You know it was um. He's one of the nicest people I've ever met, and yeah. that's like I would not say that. Yeah, yeah. He, he was just a complete and utter gentleman. And there's like obviously I've known you for quite a long time. Mm. Well, not a long time, but like I said, because she was a friend. And I know you're a very confident person, you know, around anyone. Were you still that same guy around Grant or did you think, or is that the kind of, because I suppose he's like the biggest guy in your main game. Do you know but what I mean? here's the thing. I have played the movie in my head and been with Grant and spoke to him thousands Every of times. Every day for the past three years. Thousands of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were just... Sometimes for a whole gym session I was talking to him. So I've listened to his book 16 times, 10 acts. Be obsessed or be average 10 times. Uh, sell or be sold 20 times. I've, I've read that sales book, read it and listened to it. I know his voice. And when I was sitting with him, I was calling him Mr. Cardone out of respect. Yeah, of course. But I was completely humbled, completely calm because I did it so many times inside my head. And I just felt privileged to be speaking to him. And it was so natural. And it will continue to be because I want to do a lot more work with Mr. Grant Cardone. Amazing. I, um, what an achievement. Yeah, but I don't see it like that. Yeah, I'm yeah. so delighted. Yeah. But I, my feet are planted firmly on the ground. And I just am saying to myself, okay, what's next? What's next? What's next? Yeah. You know, I would love to I would love to do mindset training with Tyson Fury. That's definitely one for me. I'd be ace, wouldn't it? Love to work with Tyson Fury. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, so much respect for him. Oh, that's what it is. So obviously you've got the event. What else is there? What is next? <clears throat> what is you know? 
go out of ground? What is well, after I, the event? I'm earmarked to be opening a rooftop hotel. More news coming soon. I'm chasing it. Um, is that UK? UK. Yeah. UK, yeah. Um, I'm wanting to break into the property market in Miami with the amazing Phil Wood. Um, so that's definitely there. Phil's moved to America. So that's definitely on the agenda. Specialist car homes. Um, I've recently went and looked at a golf course. Um, Do you even play golf? No. Because <laughs> there's an interior motive behind it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I, I know I can do so much more. Yeah. Um, and here's the thing, Grant Caron's statement, Mr. Caron's statement, success is my duty. Yeah. It's my duty for my beautiful wife, Dolores. It's my duty for my beautiful daughters, Farah and Rihanna, and my beautiful granddaughter, Nova. It's my duty to be successful and give them the life of their wildest dreams. So when I'm in England working, I'm doing 18, 20 hour days. Why would I not? Yeah. Success is my duty. I'm privileged to be doing your first podcast. Yeah, nice. It one. won't be the last. No. Um, and I wish you all the best. I wish you, I wish you all the best in your business. I think you're an amazing guy. You're going to Poland with me. Um, I, I'll connect you with a load of people in Poland. Um, I'll continue to connect you with people. I'm proud that they say you're one of my mentees. Um, it's great to see you, your success. Um, Proud to call you my friend, um, nice one, and I'm I'm loving doing this podcast for you, and I do, I'm doing it out of respect for you too, you know. And if somebody watches this tonight and it hits one person and it helps them, my job's done. So yeah. that's why I'm here. Yeah, yeah. No, nice one. I appreciate it. So, mentoring course, then. Yeah. How? Um, just to like finish up. Well, so, if somebody that, wants yeah. to get, you know. If somebody get, wants to get involved in either dream mentoring, sales workshops, yeah. um, motivational workshops, uh, sales training, motivational workshops, how? what is the best way to get in contact well, with you? I am Tom Smith, S-M-Y-T-H, the entrepreneur on Instagram. I've got 40,000 followers, so watch out for the fake accounts. You can also reach out to my amazing team, Ashley and Dylan. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn, TikTok, Tinder. No, I'm not on Tinder. Um <laughs> So reach out to me and my team. Uh, reach out to Rich, and Rich will give you my telephone number. But like, I'm I'm good to go. So um, I would love to work with you. I would love to help your team. I would love to help the male and female entrepreneurs take them to the next level, give them self confidence, and show them they can really go to ten x. So yeah, watch this space, and it works. <laughs> it does, yeah. Mate, thank you so much for coming. My really pleasure, appreciate brother. It, I hope you're done. Your, hope you're done. You're proud, mate. One hundred percent. Thank you very much. And uh, if you know anyone else that wants to come on. And it uh, would be good, by Absol all means. Absolutely. And, and winners win, guys. Winners, <laughs> winners win. win. Remember that. Winners win. <laughs>